G'day guys, it is still Wednesday here today and the time is 10 minutes past three in the afternoon. And I just wanted to have um, a quick chat to you about some things. Um, this will be uh, put up in the next upload. So when I was going around Australia and um, I was riding decent kilometers a day to get to uh, different places, and I would roll into town and, and, you know, a lot of people would come over and stuff and I was really fatigued and, it, you know, uh, over time it really started to, um, to affect me. So in previous uploads I have, I've mentioned to you that I, before getting into a township where I was going to stay for the night, I would um, go to an industrial area or a park well away from the township proper and I would have a rest there something to eat, maybe a quick nap before I actually went into the town and looked for a place to, um, to stay the night, you know, get water, maybe cook some food at a barbecue or whatever, uh, or even just have a look around, you know. I'd... So what is happening now, I've been at this camp spot for over a week now, it's been like nine days today. Um, I get a lot of people coming through, uh, like all the time it's you know maybe between five to ten people a day walking through some of those conversations are, are, are quite fast uh, and and other ones are, are quite lengthy um, and you know compared to how I was when I was riding and and having a lot of people come over and being fatigued and trying to you know accommodate people and have a chat to them about everything while I'm here, I'm not doing these kilometres every day, so it is a lot easier on me um, to have these chats with people. Uh, so there, you know, a bit of awareness there that, you know, fatigue and hunger it can really play a massive part in my personality uh, and how I um, and my attitude to people, etc. So, yeah, it's just interesting. I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, it's not really a big thing, uh, you know, some people still, um, I've had people when I've been inside cooking, they, they just come up and bang on the side of the rig thinking that that's okay, you know, and, and look, it's not, and, and I let these people know in no uncertain terms that, you know, that's unacceptable, I don't care how cu curious you are or you know, whatever, or you think I'm a kindred spirit, you just do not come up and bang on the side of someone's house, because that's what this is, this is my house. Um, and I've got other people that just walk off the road here, uh, you know, off this public road, which it is, and just, they just walk around, and they, you know, they don't announce themselves at the front and say, hello, and give me some kind of um, warning that, that you know, they want to have a chat or they want to come and look in. I mean, just today and yesterday I was sitting here doing some editing and then an apparition appeared on my left side, uh, stuck their head in first while they were kind of saying hello at the same time. I mean, you know, guys, be very careful, you know, uh, doing that. <laughs> that is unacceptable behaviour. You need to really announce yourself uh, well away from the rig, holler out uh, before you approach me. Um, and that's just common decency, guys. Just because I'm camped out here and I'm in a unique uh, kind of um, uh, home or transportation, you know, don't let your curiosity get the better of your social etiquette, yeah? Because I've had a lot of people do it and if if I'm tired or fatigued or whatever, or just not in a good mood, they have come off second best, so to speak. Anyway, it's food for thought, and um, I'm not perfect either, guys. I could obviously be a lot more gentle in my approach at times, but I am human after all, eh? Apparently. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning in July 22. And the time is about a quarter to eight in the morning. 
and I've packed up and I'm almost at the starting point of that coastal road. Um, I pulled over at the corner store. I, I, all, well, I did forget to hand the fob in, the, um, the little bracelet that allows you to get into the, um, the ablution block. So I got halfway into town and realized I'd forgotten it. So I took it back and then I thought, ah, oh, while I'm here, you know, I may as well have a coffee and a couple of sausage rolls with sauce, which is what I did. And um, now I've just pulled over, I finished the coffee, I put it in the bin, but I just wanted to show you one last little pic uh, in, uh, some footage of this area here before I leave. I'm, I'm just outside of the shops here at Inverloch, so I'll spin you around so you can have a look. And it is gorgeous, mate. I'll do a, a pan like this. I'm not sure how good this is going to come out, guys, because um, it's bad light and I don't have the right filters yet, so... But you can see way up there in the distance, I'll try and zoom in for you so you get a better look. There are cliffs right in that distance there. And that is what I am going to be going around. So uh, yes, it will be interesting. The V-Line bus goes um, around from Inverloch to Cape Patterson between 7.22 a.m. and about 7.30 a.m. So I've missed it, which is great. So now the only thing I need to worry about are vehicles. So um, the plan is uh, I've already got the drone half set up. So what I'll be doing is um, I'll just keep that in that, Im that sunrise in that image for you there, guys. I think it's quite nice. You don't need to see my ugly face first thing in the morning. <laughs> Uh, so the plan is I won't tape uh, drone from the very start of this coastal road because it's just too dangerous. There's a little car park nook a few kilometres into the actual coastal road itself and I plan on going in there, um, getting the drone, finish setting the drone up, putting it up, getting the right angle of the dangle and the active track or the parallel working. And then from there, there is about a kilometre of open cliff road, meaning there are no bushes on either side or very few, and it's only a kilometre. And I feel pretty, uh, it'll be a lot less ang of an anxiety attack for me to do just one kilometre of droning as opposed to, you know, however many kilometres that road is. Um, So that is the plan, and when I get there, I'll tell you the name of the car park. It's called Shoal Rocks or something, or hey, I forget. I've written it down, but I will tell you again when I get there. I'll just tell you that the coffee and the sausage rolls I had at the corner store cafe are very nice. So thanks, guys, and you got really good chips as well. So just spin you around, have a quick look how fast this tide's moving out. Have a look at the. Hope you can see it. Hang on, let's go up. Have a look how quick that's going. That's like a, a river, mate. Look at that. So, yeah, there, there is a bit of current through here, but where I was at Mayer's Landing the other day, it's not as, uh, it's not as severe. This is gobsmacking. All right. Let's go do this coastal road. One last look without my finger in the way. Boom. Maybe with me in there as well. Hello. All right, let's do it. Okay. We are coming up to it now, to the start of the coastal road. And uh, here we go. Hopefully there's no cars coming for a while. We'll be right. But as you can see, it is no shoulder at all and it's like this pretty much the whole way around and uh, uphill on a very slight gradient so it's going to be very very slow going and I just hope I don't piss off too many people by being on here 
Now the first car park where I'm going to pull over and put the drone up <coughs> is a few kilometres ahead. Oh god, here comes the bus. I thought I'd missed the bus. Here we go. I think it's a V-line bus or a school bus, guys. He's giving me a wide berth. It's all right. South Coast bus, school bus. There you go. Best laid plans. <laughs> oh, well, at least I missed the V-line bus. And at least I was on a straight here. So hopefully that's the first and last one that we'll see. And uh, should be right because going forward where that bus is up ahead everything starts to get very twisty and cornery and uphillsy oh yes it's great can't wait <laughs> all right I'll probably put this in a fast forward so it's not so boring for you because uh, I imagine I'm gonna get pretty puffed out uh, on this few kilometer ride till we get to the next spot and uh, Oh, I'll just say this, up ahead on the right hand side is the RACV Inverloch Resort. Um, I've never stayed there, although I've been there before. As in, I've, ate, I've eaten in the restaurant there, I think it is, or the cafe, and many, many, many years ago when they first opened. And there was a big rush are employing hundreds and hundreds of people to work there and yes and I uh, I almost got a job there and then something else happened or I don't, I don't remember what but I didn't end up working there all right I don't even know if I'll put it in a fast forward it's pretty boring crap I'll just I'll just stop it till we get to the next one to the car park all right Okay, here's the first really scary corner with a blind spot around to the right. There is a little bit of a shoulder at the top of it on the left. So if anyone comes up behind me, I can tuck in there briefly and then wait for the traffic to go by and then come out and hopefully pick up a bit of speed. It looks like it's gonna start going down a little bit over the, the crest there and uh, oh mate my match fitness so I've just been sitting around all day at that campsite doing bugger oh. and this is the first decent hill got no cars coming up behind there was another bus but it was coming from the same way this car's coming now Oh dear. Still no cars behind. So we may be able to just come out of this little shoulder park and keep going. Oh, I hear, I hear a big engine, like a bus or a tractor or something. Can't see anything. Might just be a farmer. Little farmland on the right. So uh, no cars coming, so we'll just keep pushing. All right. Okay, I've just pulled over very briefly to go to the toilet and um, have a rest from that massive hill. And this is the view from this little rest area. I wouldn't even call it a, a, like a little lookout thing. I'll show you in a sec, but it's not a bad view. I'll zoom in for you. This is kind of like what you're gonna see when I get the drone up. You'll see me riding, of course, hopefully. And then uh, this as the backdrop. It should be quite lovely, I'm sure. All right, zoom back in, I mean out. And I'll just show you this. I might even get a bit of a shot of this. It might make some kind of a thumbnail at some stage. I don't know. Too dark though, I need to face the other way. How's the angle of the dangle on that? See, this has got a bit of a curvature to it, this, um, this little road here. So that's, that's, that's horizontal, so that's the angle that thing's on. You wouldn't want much more of an angle than that, it'd probably t tip over. <laughs> 
snapshot take photo that doesn't want to do it all right no worries let's go okay got another hill coming up with a corner possible blind spot and to the left is the first little car park nook called the caves but that's not the one we want because from this one to the next one there's too much uh, shrubbery and too many trees uh, you won't see me very well so and I may lose the, um, the parallel active track so we'll keep going to the next one which is a kilometer or two ahead something like that so we'll see how we go oh this isn't too bad it's not too much of a blind spot just bloody steep all right just remember there's a couple of things I wanted to tell you uh, I churn through heaps of data oh we got a bus coming here we go turn me lights on me, me hazard lights yeah, he's giving me a berth good on you buddy thanks mate see what I mean this bloody spot here I've come at the wrong time <laughs> clearly all the kids going to school I didn't take into account school buses I just thought v-line buses and I've missed those okay noted next time leave after 9 a.m. possibly and then the only thing I need to worry about are the tourists <laughs> yes so okay a couple of things I wanted to talk about I use a lot of data doing what I do my new computer is very fast at rendering and um, processing uh, and editing my, my footage and that's amazing so you know it only takes like at most the, the longest it's ever taken is about 15 minutes and that was a 30 minute upload with a bunch of stuff inside it see the more you do inside your your upload sorry I'm a bit puffed things like the subscribe animation the buy me a coffee animation any text you put in you know whether there's transitions all that that all adds to the flavor and uh, creates for a longer processing and rendering time but the issue is where I use up a heap of my data is when I'm uploading into YouTube it can take two three hours sometimes even for a 30 minute video and that's got nothing to do with my computer it may have a little to do with the upload speed but I've checked that and the last few places I've been in I've had three or four bars of, of connectivity so it shouldn't be that wow this hill's very steep anyway just quickly one last thing as you know the semi-trailer has a metallic green vehicle wrap on it and that affects the Wi-Fi signal when you're inside lying down trying to watch YouTube it really affects it the only way I can counteract that because I use the phone as a hotspot I either have to put the phone outside on the roof of the semi-trailer underneath the Tupperware container or I've got to open up one of the portholes and have the phone right in front of the porthole uh, and do it like that anyway this hill's killing me I'm gonna sign off for a bit okay folks here I am down at that particular car park to send up the drone uh, it's called Twin Reefs and the next spot where I'll be stopping to bring the drone back in after it following me for uh, nearly a kilometre is called the Oaks. So I'm just going to walk in here and get a thumbnail, possibly for later, because you never know. And then I'll just spin you around here. There's some kind of sheltery thing there. Beautiful uh, view there. But wait until I'm going to send up the drone here, do some footage. And then I'm going to bring the drone in, change the battery, and then send it up, and then ride off on. So we'll come up here.
I'll show you up here a little bit. So, just as I was pulling in here, some person let me know that they were somewhat perplexed with me being on this coastal road. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be on here any more than you want me on here, guys. But there's no bike track, so sod it and sod you. Sorry, not sorry. Terrible that you have to be 30 seconds later or 60 seconds later to whatever ridiculous time constraint thing is you've allowed yourself to be put under. And that's on you, mate. No one else but you. You've created this world for yourself, now you can deal with it. I have a little bit of pity and compassion for you, but there is enough information available now for you to make better life choices than running around everywhere thinking that you're in some McDonald's drive through Anyway, that's my rant. <laughs> All right, it's a beautiful little walking track up here. Oh wow, check out that sun. Those beams of light coming through there. That looks freaking awesome, man. I don't know how well you can see that, but there it is. All right, let's continue on this walking track. Just for a little bit, pardon me, because I want to send up a drone and I really want to be off this coastal road as soon as possible. I know it's breathtaking and everything, but it'd be different if I was staying, you know, here for the night. I would just stay in this car park, but I've got to get back. I am uh, not, it's not a heavy time constraint that I'm on, but I do want to see my son this weekend. And the only way to do that is to get cracking. Oh, it's not real cracking. I've got time to smell the roses, so to speak is what I'm doing and uh, yeah I think there might be a look at down here there's a beautiful rock formation out on the tip here it is incredible and I'm gonna get some drone of that I'm gonna fly the drone right through the two of them hopefully without smashing it <laughs> danger unstable cliffs keep clear meaning don't go over there yeah no worries I have no intention of doing that all good brother all right Whew. there it is there's the little rocky formation oh there's not two of them it's just the one from the other angle when I was coming in it looked like there was two of them anyway that's quite pretty isn't it Oh yes, pan around a little bit. There's that beautiful sunrise again, or the sun coming through the clouds. We're a bit past sunrise. And look at that. Wait till you see that on the drone, guys. It's going to look freaking awesome, man. And then me riding along the coastal road with all that, uh, which will be coming down on that kind of angle. The drone will be there. I'll be here and that water and the cliffs will be that way because the sun is back there and we want that behind us and that's the way it's going to be. All right. Uh, I was mistaken. This is actually, this spot that I'm in is actually called uh, the Eagle's Nest or Eagle's Nest. And uh, from what I saw on Google Earth, uh, it's not a real great spot to send up the drone and then have it parallel track me to the next spot. Uh, but I will send up the drone here because it's just so nice and get a bit of uh, footage of that. And then I'll ride on to the next one or the one after the next. But the one I'm heading to is called Twin Reefs. And then the one after that is called the Oaks. And um, that's where I'll be releasing the drone again at Twin Reefs and then riding a kilometre to the Oaks and then bringing the drone back in. All right, let's send it up here at Eagle's Nest.
to uh, Twin Reefs and we've got some funky little corners here I've got my hazard lights on which are my Wi-Fi or Bluetooth indicators uh, which you know they're not great but it's better to have them on when you're going around corners like this in um, you know average daylight conditions so as soon as I get on a straight or somewhere a bit safer I'll turn them off you might be able to hear that, the noise that they make. I just charged all these up the other night, so they should be good for this little stretch. And then later on tonight, I'll charge them all again. This is a few really hairy corners along here. Thankfully, there's no cars behind me at the moment or since I turned out of the Eagle's Nest. And uh, we'll see how we go. All right, we've got a very steep decline hill coming up and it says to do 40 k's an hour around it. So we'll turn on the hazard lights again 
and I'll slow right down because it looks like a pretty sharp corner. Because uh, once this baby gets uh, rocking, there's no stopping it. <laughs> and I, I mean that literally. There's just nothing you can do once it reaches a certain speed and the hill is still going down. <laughs> you just got to hold on for dear life. So it's always an idea to not release the brakes until you're absolutely sure, like I am now, because I can see it coming around and then up, that you can pick up your speed and like I'm doing now. But that was a real sharp corner. If I had to let this the momentum build up, I would have turned too sharp and it would have rolled and I could have caused an accident or been killed. So I've always got to think of those sort of things. Now we've got another area up here which is not the right one the way we want to go in and send up the drone and have it follow me it's the one after this one this one is called shack bay it's just after eagle's nest and uh look if i had more time i'd go in there and have a look but uh, i've got to get somewhere today at a certain time well we're before dark and it's well over 40 kilometers and it's going to take even longer now that I've made this little detour along this coastal road which is okay but that is the plan <laughs> to get to this spot which you'll see later all going well otherwise um, I may have to pull over somewhere in a rest area and stay the night if I'm too fatigued all right Okay, we're nearly there. But we've got a lovely little lookout coming up, as in a view. I don't know if I can pull over there. Parking, yet yeah, 200 metres, and we're at Twin Reefs on the left. And that's when I'll send up the drone, put it in parallel med, and ride a whole kilometre with it following me. Hopefully, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. coming up here the reefs twin reefs that's us this is where we want to go us oh dear it looks like there's quite a hill going down there that's not good that means I may not oh hang on and it's gravel oh I may no I think that's too steep I don't think I'd get back up from there so we'll still send up the drone but we'll do it from here. I'm not going to go down there, that's too risky. Anyway, I hope people understand that uh, I've just pulled over here to send up the drone and not to get freaky with me. Alright, let's do that. Been too long. These are gone. Heading for the coastline. When I'm there Soaking in the sunshine We walk for miles Covered in smiles Just for a while Taking the time We press rewind Out on the aisles Eyes wide as the sea Feels like a city We walk for miles Counting the smiles just for a while Right out on the coastline Ripples on the pavement Birds like kings Spread their wings Needle to the pain bridge We walk for miles covered in smiles just for a while Taking the time we press rewind out on the eye Sweet as the sea 
feels like a city We walk for miles counting the smiles just for a while Right out on the coastline Thinking about you, thinking about you, little Thinking about you, thinking about you, little Thinking about you, thinking about you, little Dreaming of the coastline
G'day guys, I just wanted to have a quick chat to you uh, before it gets dark here. It is five o'clock. Uh, I won't tell you where I am because I'm going to stay here tonight. I'm not exactly sure exactly where I'm going to stay here. Uh, there's a few different spots like the one I'm at right now. I wanted to tell you something that happened. Uh, after I left that coastal road and I rode almost I was coming through Dalliston, I think, and there was a guy parked on the side of the road in a little, you know, uh, service area, and I rode up towards him, and I could see that he was taping me with his phone, or filming me with his phone, and at the last second, he said, oh, can I have a few moments of your time? But it was too late, I was already past uh, the, the service area, and I do not stop in the shoulder of the roads as you know from previous uploads it is too dangerous uh, so anyway I yelled out to him sorry mate I've, I'm in a bit of a hurry <laughs> I hate to say that but I was very fatigued and I didn't want to stop and I wanted to get to this place where I am now uh, so I had time to edit this upload before it got too dark uh, and have a good rest so I kept riding anyway I'm coming towards Kilkunda and in the distance I see this chap <laughs> waiting for me on the side of the road once again and um, this was at the, the, the 
down the hill of Kilcunda where the old rail bridge is, which you've seen in a previous upload. He was in that same spot where I put the drone up that time. And he was waiting there and once again filming with his phone. And as I approached him, um, he sort of yelled out, how about now? Kind of thing. <laughs> and I sort of said, look, I'm gonna go to the general store at Kilcunda and grab a couple of things. I can give you five minutes of my time while I'm there, if that's okay. And I kept riding and he yelled out, oh, where's that? And I said, oh, it's up ahead. So anyway, I'm riding another five minutes. It took me to get up there. It was a very steep hill. And I get up there, he's waiting for me. It turns out, I believe he said his name was Michael Giles. And he is um, a reporter for the Sentinel Times uh, in Gippsland somewhere or the Bass Coast. And he interviewed me for about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. And then um, we parted ways, lovely chap. And then I went in and I grabbed a few things from the general store. And then I continued on my way. Now, just before I got to the big roundabout, uh, so you're coming from Wonthaggy, Kilcunda Way, and you're heading towards Melbourne, right? Uh, so there's a massive roundabout. And back in the day, that was the only way that you could go. Uh, and that you'd hit the roundabout and you could turn left and you'd go to Phillip Island. Uh, it's still the same, but there's, there's a difference. So before I tell you the difference, on the right hand side of the roundabout, as you've seen in a previous upload, there is the ablution block and a bus stop and a car park. Now, about 500 metres before there, I hear a helicopter. Chop, 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 chop. And I shit you not, for the next 10 to 15, 20 minutes, <laughs> I'm not sure what it was, I was um, followed by a news crew in a helicopter. There was the guy hanging out the side of the helicopter with the filming gear and all that. And they were circling around me and coming down really close. And I've got a little bit of footage of it. And I'm going to put that up. right now so you can see it it's on my phone because I ran out of storage on my uh, DJI action 2 camera and that's all I had available so you'll see a little bit of it I hope it's not too sketchy I have no idea which film crew these guys were it was a blue and yellow and white helicopter I think I saw the letters RTH or RIH or something I'm really not sure I couldn't get a really good look at it but they were very interested in what I was doing. And, uh, and I thought, crikey, I've just had an interview at Kilcunda, and now I've got the Chop Chop crew coming through. So it was pretty cool. All right. Just want to shout out to my mate uh, and subscriber, Chris Ralston, AKA Shreky. Thanks, mate, for buying me the five coffees in the Buy Me A Coffee uh, link that I leave in the description. Uh, the bar has been set pretty high, first by Gillian, and now me mate Shreky's come on board and, and done another five as well. So good on you guys. Uh, thank you so much. It's much appreciated. I no doubt will be jittering around the place after drinking 10 coffees one after the other. Maybe I'll spread them out a little bit. <laughs> I'm back in uh, the concrete jungle. I'm back over here visiting my son for the weekend. Uh, and gonna like sleep in a normal bed and, and have a, a, a proper meal kind of thing and, and have a great time with my son uh, and enjoy a few well-earned comforts, perhaps. Yes. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next uh, adventure, sojourn, upload. Ciao for now.